David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Yes, he did. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. I'm glad about God this morning, aren't you? Amen. You should be. If you're not, you should be. Because we serve a great and mighty God. There's none like him. None can be compared to him. He's God all by yes, he himself. Yes, he, he has no equal. He has no comparison. He's God, and I'm grateful. He's not only the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the sovereign God of the universe. Yes, he He's in charge of everything. I'm so grateful that that's the kind of God we serve. That when we call on him, we don't get a busy signal. But when we call on him, he hears our cry before it leaves our lips. Because that's the kind of God we serve. God even told him on one hand, I know what you pray for before you even pray. Before you got it out of your head and on your tongue. And he said, I knew about it. And I'm glad that God knows me because I may be in a place that I can't speak it. And I just have to mumble it and hum it. You ever hum something before God? You ever mumble something before God? You ever moan a little bit and God heard you? That's the kind of God we serve. He's not sitting on a mantle. He's not an idol. He's not made of, of, of something that can expire or perish. But he's a God that's from everlasting, the Bible says, to everlasting. A great God. The only true God, a mighty God. Glory, who wouldn't serve a God like this? You couldn't talk about anybody like this but God. You couldn't name a person that ever existed, amen, apart from Jesus Christ, who you could say was a great God. Our God is great. If you have your Bibles, we, we read our text, but I want to read it again in your hearing, the 40th chapter of book of Isaiah beginning at the 12th verse. For the chapter of Isaiah, the 12th verse, it says, who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and met it out heaven with a span and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure and weighing the mountains in a scale and the hills in a balance. Who hath directed the spirit of the Lord, or being his counselor, hath taught him? With whom took he counsel, and who, struck, who instructed him, and taught him in the path of judgment, and taught him knowledge, and showed to him the way of understanding? Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket, and are counted as a small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very little thing. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. O oh, nations before him are as no all nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. To whom will ye liken God? Or what likeness will you compare unto him? I tell you what, if you read that scripture and take your time and read it a several times, you can recognize uh, with, a, with a little bit of intelligence that it can only be referring to God. Amen. Amen. Only referring to God. Nobody can hold the earth in his hand. Nobody can measure islands and measure countries on a scale. And nobody can, can, can burn a sacrifice and burn up an entire continent and it wouldn't be sufficient to be a proper sacrifice. It can only be God. And our God is a great God. He's a mighty God. If I might use for it just a word this morning, and as I was thinking about it, and oftentimes even in slang and the way we talk sometimes and the vernacular and the conversations we have and the things we say, and I just thought about enough said. 
enough said. I mean, enough said might say to some people that's the conclusion of the whole thing, or you need not say anymore, but when I thought about God's greatness, I just thought about enough said. I'm totally convinced that God doesn't have to do another thing to prove to me that he's God. Amen. Enough said. I I don't have to convince nobody. I don't have to prove it anymore. Enough said. God is who he is because he's God. Amen. Glory to God. There's nobody like him. If I had a thousand years, I could never explain of the greatness and the glory of God because he's unexplainable. Yeah. If you don't know him, you don't know him. The only way to experience and to get a glimpse of his glory is that he deposit himself in you. That's why Jesus told Nicodemus, he said, you're a ruler in Israel? You, you're a godly man? You're a religious person? You're part of the church? You're part of the synagogue? You're in the, in the, in the word daily, night and day, and you don't know what it is to be born again? You must be. To see me, to know me, to experience it, to understand who I am, you must born again. You must be in order for God to be enlightened in your spirit, in order for God to turn on the lights in your headlights, if you will. You must be born again. Lord, turn on the light. Lord, illuminate me. Lord, show me yourself. Glory to God. Jesus made every effort to make it simple, but how many know that sometimes God will say something and you have to let him speak a couple times before you really get it, even though we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, a lot of times our flesh gets on the way and we want to comprehend it through our flesh rather than realize it through our spirit, so a lot of times God's got to speak more than once for us to get it. The disciples were with Jesus for quite some time. It was a short time if you took, if you judge time. But the fact that it was with him for over three years, and they were with him and still didn't know who he was. And the Bible declares in St. John 14, 6, Jesus said, I've been with you a long way, a long time. You still want to know what the way is? He said, I'm the way. The truth, Jesus tried to make it simple, but except you believe it, receive it, and understand it, and comprehend it in your spirit, you're still in the dark. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no man cometh unto the Father, but by me. Enough said. He said, listen, how many more times do I got to say it? I'm he. I'm the man that was in the desert. I'm the fire that burned on Mount Hebron. He said, listen, I'm, on the, I'm the rock. Yeah. I'm the strength. I'm the power. I'm the authority. I'm he that separated yeah. the Red Sea. I'm God. Yeah. Yeah. And if you knew who I was, you remember the woman at the well in the fourth chapter of St. John? He told her, he said, listen, you here in this well, you get in this well, and you say you're related to Jacob. But he said, if you knew who I was, If you knew who I was, yes. I don't believe, I, listen, I don't believe that anybody can come in contact with God and not ask for more God. Yes. Yes. Don't tell me you're mad and you didn't get better. Amen. What you mean, God begins to stir in your spirit to change your life. Amen. Amen. He didn't call you not to get you to come. He's not doing the, you know, folks used to do them uh, 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 bird calls just to call birds. He didn't do that. When he called you, he had a purpose in your life. Yes, yes. He said, I'm going to convince you mm -hmm. of who I am. Yes. Amen. Yes. Because once you know who I am, once. then you can open the door to all that I have for you because I'm God and I have the ability to unlock it. Amen. Amen. I can give to you what you could never afford. Amen. I can release in your life what you could never have except you know me. Amen. Glory to God. Mm. 
when you look at the work, uh, King Solomon was a wise man. God gave him much wisdom. But the interesting part, he expounds so much on wisdom. But wisdom is essential. But if you if you fail to apply the wisdom, your life can be pointless and have no value. You can have an empty life and have a lot of wisdom and never apply it. Solomon was that very example. God gave him all that wisdom. And yet he didn't apply it to the extent that it benefited him. Solomon said in conclusion in Ecclesiastes 12 and 13, he said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. He knew it, he heard it, he spoke it, but didn't believe it enough to try it. You have to tell somebody, try God. Yes. Mm. You done watched my life. You done seen how God done blessed my life. You seen how God done kept me from danger even when I was foolish. He said, try God. Amen. Solomon even said it. He said, fear God, keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man. Amen. If you want to know God, fear him. Come on. Not fear him to be scared of him, but fear him to reverence him because he's God. Recognize that he's awesome. Yes. Recognize that he's mighty. He's He's awesome. Yes, he is. He's awesome because he's here. Not awesome because he did something. 
because first of all, it seems impossible. But the scripture says that with God, with man, things are impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So God will give you a level of expectation that's beyond your natural. And it'll be a supernatural thing that God is doing in you so that you can believe it and see it as God sees it. Yes, yes. I am what I am because of God. I can do what I can do because of God. I'm blessed because God said so. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not believe. I'm blessed and I'm not cursed. I'm healed and I'm holy in his name. Amen. I can see myself as God reveals himself. And let's me know that I'm in charge your life. Amen. No man, no woman, no boy, no girl, no incident, no sickness, no harm, nothing can come upon you except God allow it. Yes. And if he didn't allow it, stop worrying about it. Stop being concerned about that which hasn't happened yet. Yes. Because if God has control, which he does, we can trust him yes. for the results. Yes. Hmm. Ooh, glory. See it as he sees it, with no limits and no limitations. God doesn't change. He doesn't change his mind. He's not fickle. Uh -huh. He makes up his mind. When God says a thing, it is so. God doesn't change his mind. James 1 and 17 says, every good gift and every perfect gift come, uh, it is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights. Which whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. God said, if I released it on your behalf, it's because I wanted you to have it. Stop complaining about what God gave you as a blessing. And recognize it was never to hurt you, but to bless you. Yeah, come on. Thank you. God said, if I gave it to you, stop complaining. Yeah. Stop worrying about how you're going to use it. How is it going to work and operate? God said, if I released it in your life, if I remained your life, if I anointed your life, enjoy Lord. It's my gift. It wasn't your gift. You couldn't have earned it. You didn't even know you had it. Oh, happy Holy Ghost. You didn't even know you had it Amen. until I revealed it to you. Amen. All right. Amen. My, my, my. Amen. Whew. Help him, Lord. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Now, I wasn't the best student in high school. Huh? I'd like to let all y'all know I got straight A's, but I didn't. <laughs> I like to say my stuff looks like Christmas tree with all the lights <laughs> and all the colors. Wow. But there was gifts inside of me that I didn't know existed Amen. until God saved me. Amen. Now, the only way they were released is because God released it. So understand this, that God has the power to unlock in you that which he only can reveal. Yeah. You would never know you could do what you're doing now except God had released in you the power to move in your destiny. You didn't know you could do. You didn't know you could say. You didn't know you could walk in a blessing. You didn't know you had the ability and the, and the strength to do what you do, but God released it yeah. because he's God. It would have still been locked up had he not saved you. See, salvation is deliverance. Sir. You are not only delivered from death, you were released to walk in your purpose and in your destiny. I'd hurry up and get saved if I wasn't saved after hearing that. That God got some stuff locked up that can only be released if I come to him. Amen. 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 Enough said, beloved. Can't say enough about who God is. Not only is he unchanging, God's word is true and will and cannot and will not fail. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 1 and 20, for all the promises of God in him are yea and in him amen unto the glory of God. All the promises of God 
in him are yes and amen. It's over. There's, there, there's nothing after amen and there's nothing before yes. God's promises are yea and amen. amen. God said, listen, when I spoke a thing, it's coming to pass. Yes. So when it does what it says, it's at its conclusion. Yes. When I spoke it, it was for your purpose. So you can trust my promise yes. because my promises accomplish their task and their goal and do for me what I have sent them to do. Because listen, a promise of God, all you can do is wait on it. It doesn't fail because you're waiting, but if God has given you a promise, all you got to do is pat your foot and wait on God to bring it to pass. Amen. Thank you. He can't fail, nor he will he lie, because he cannot lie. Hmm. All the promises in him are yea and amen. God is omnipresent. He's a present help. The Bible says in, in, in uh, Psalms 46 and 11, the Lord of hosts is with us and the God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. In other words, he said, listen, God is a present help. He doesn't have to show up. He's here. All you got to do is speak his name. That's why the Bible tells us that two or three are gathered in his name. He is in the midst. Yeah. He's not absent. We don't have to pray him up. He's here. Amen. God is omnipresent. He's everywhere at all times. And I love that last little word, Selah. Selah literally means to pause and calmly think of that. So when they say Selah, when you look in the Psalms, it says Selah, it means for you to take a pause after you read the scripture and think of what it says. I know. Woo, glory. Selah, wait on the Lord. Selah, I think I'll pause and think about it. You ought to say that sometime when God give you a word. After God speak a word to you, say Selah, because I'm going to pause and think about it for a minute and really understand what it means. Because God wants you to pause anyway and give him praise. God wants you to take time to think about how good he's been Amen. in your life. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Enough said. I'll tell you what. Enough. I believe God. I don't have to hear another thing. Amen. I believe God. Amen. That God's word is not only right, yes. oh, it's steadfast, yes. glory to God, and unmovable. Yes. Thank you, Lord. That's right. Thank you, Lord. When you look at our text here, I'm not going to read it again, but keep a few things here. It talks about God's ability to just hold the, hold the, uh, the, the measure the waters of the earth in his hand. And one scripture says he sits on the circle of the earth. He's able to measure mountains. He's able to, who is able to direct the spirit of God? Nobody can do this but God. Who did God take counsel with? God never sat on nobody's bench or laid on nobody's couch to get some wisdom. God has all wisdom. He took counsel with himself. The Bible says, my God said unto my God, oh, yes, sir, God will speak to himself. I'm God. You don't like it, I'm still God. All by myself. Man will say that God don't exist. God is saying, that's all right. I'll swear by myself. And I say, I'm still God. Amen. I'm still all powerful. Amen. I'm still almighty. I don't take counsel from nobody. Everybody is like a drop in a bucket. Doesn't matter what nation, every nation around is as, 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 as nothing to me. Because I created everything. If I blew on it, it would no longer exist. But God said, listen, because I'm merciful love, and my mercy endures forever, I'm giving you opportunity to give me glory. Amen. Enough said, He's God all by himself. I don't need to give him another praise, but he's deserving of all praise. It doesn't matter how you feel about him. He's still God whether you feel anything or not. Thank you, Lord. 
like Jesus told them. He said, just don't worry about them folk. Yeah, don't stop them. Uh, because if they don't give me praise, uh, the very rocks will cry out. Uh, because of who I am. Uh, not because of what I've done. Uh, but because, oh, you got to get this, beloved. Uh, I'm not praising God. Uh, I'm not giving him awesome glory because of what he's done. Uh, I'm giving him the glory because of who he is. Yes. Yes. Enough said, beloved. Uh, Yes, 
like Moses in the cleft of a rock yes, so that he wouldn't be put in danger. Because yes. God said, you can't stand me yes, if you I saw me. Yes, but I'll let you see the blessing. Oh, yes, yes sir. Yes, Lord. That's about to follow. Yes. When you give me praise, uh, yes. the blessing follows. Yes. Maybe that's the problem, uh, that the blessing hasn't been released uh, in your life. Uh, you haven't been giving them the glory, oh yes sir, to the extent uh, that God says you allow me to release uh, what I need to let go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mm. Thank you Lord. Thank you. Glory to God. Thank you. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. Prophet Isaiah kind of closed up that last part of that chapter in the 40th chapter, the 28th verse. Uh, he says, listen, uh, has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, uh, neither is weary, there is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, uh, and to them that have, have no might, uh, he increases strength, uh, even the youth shall faint, uh, and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fail, uh, but they, glory to God, thank God for the promises of God, thank God for his glory, but they that wait on the Lord, oh yes sir, shall renew their strength, uh, they will mount up with wings as eagles, uh, they will run and not be weary, and they'll walk and not faint, all I got to do is wait on it, uh, trusting God for the glory uh, to release in me, uh, Whatever I stand in you. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Ooh, yes, sir. Yes, Lord. Glory. Yes, Lord. Enough Hallelujah. said, beloved. Uh, there's not enough I can say uh, about his glory. Uh, I was thinking about this when I was this morning. Uh, and I thought about it. I said, God, uh, why do you do what you do? Uh, he said, I do what I do because of God. Uh, I can do anything I please to do. Uh, and what I please to do uh, is all right. Yes. God is not measured by man. Yes. Though man may judge God, yes. man don't have enough uh, yes. with them uh, to judge him who created them. Yes. Oh, thank God for thank Jesus. You, uh, yes. When God told Abraham uh, again that he would have a son in his old yes. age, uh, the Bible says Sarah laughed, uh, but God wasn't laughing. Uh, he said, listen, in Genesis 18 and 14, yes. is there anything uh, to
Nobody going to steal my praise. Nobody going to steal my worship of my sovereign God. I'm not going to let no man, woman, boy, or girl stand between me and my Savior. Hallelujah. 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 See, God said, listen, I'm about to release in your life. Yes. What is your destiny? Yes, Lord. Enough said, God. Yes, Lord. You're more than able to bring it. Thank you, Lord. 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 Who will ye yes. like to God? Thank you, Lord. God is like no one. No one. Because he's God. Oh, yes. All my Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Thank you, Lord. Enough said, God. God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.